Okay. Are we recording right now? Yeah, we've been recording the whole time. Oh, okay. All right, cool. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah, I just want to get this in my sack. Like, what's in this drink? Oh, sure. So that's um, Go-Gut powder from uh, Go-Gut, and then it's also the GI Plus from Revive. So that's going to help your gut uh, handle all the food you've been tossing into it. Yeah. <laughs> I put on 30 pounds since yesterday, and you can't tell by my face, guys, and my gut is absolutely in knots. And I'm like, hey, help me out. And this is what he concocted. So yeah. then give it a taste. Actually, tastes pretty good. Not bad, right? It's like an apple juice kind of thing going. Yeah. Usually think about this color. I like. I mean, iced tea, red apple juice. So yeah. hope this doesn't be straight. We're to hit this podcast right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you tuned for it. There you go. Cool. Yeah, it's, it's just that. That's it, bro. That's it. I used to do that on Instagram, you know, but like there's just so many things going on. I wasn't getting monetized. I need money from that. So it was just like hard to keep up. Yeah, yeah, the incentive kind of died out. Um, so that's dope. I'm super stoked to learn the Snapchat thing. I've been seeing them running ads all the time. Like nine and 10 kids are on Snapchat. You should push your bit. Have you done any ads on Snapchat for like PR or maybe White Rabbit? Right. So that's phase two. But now that it monetized stories, mm-hmm. I want to be able to get my products on Snapchat. Just like all the ads are running on my Snapchat story, right? I want to be able to be able to run ads for PR and what sure. I'm trying to figure that out right now. Okay, cool. Yeah, so I have everything else that I'm running ads on, like TikTok, Facebook, and all, but nothing with Snapchat yet. So I wonder what the return to be. Yeah, yeah, I'm really curious too. They, they're always putting ads on my TV, and I'm like, eventually I'm just going to have to do it because they keep pestering me. Because if their ads are working on me, I bet they, my ads will work on other people through that, you know? Absolutely. And that's how it goes. Um, what's your favorite app for like pushing uh, marketing when it comes to like supplements and stuff like that? So that would have to be Instagram, mm-hmm. just because they get the most reach. Mm-hmm. And that would be story posts because I can throw up a story every day about products and services that I offer mm-hmm. where it won't affect my engagement and I won't be penalized for showing products and store service in people's face. Like if you post frequently on your main feed, uh, that you're sales salesy stuff? Right. You get penalized, right? Your really? next post is gonna get less reach. Damn, I need so, a list of these things to know about because I'm constantly posting stuff on there about like the shop and products and things like that. Okay, so that's a uh, that'll penal you. <laughs> yeah, they do. Yeah, they yeah. do. They want organic yeah. content, okay. original content, and they reward you for that. And when you are posting too much content that's just really about, about trying to make money, mm-hmm. um, it doesn't get nearly as much reach. So now I try to keep that balance where most of my content, the like majority of it is all organic posts. Mm-hmm. And I have a couple posts really just from Boohoo Man that are mandatory every month. Mm-hmm. But outside of that, it's all both videos from me lifting, bodybuilding, it's all organic. Yeah. And then the stories where, okay, I can post about yeah, yeah, yeah. PR, every way it's just products and services. Yeah, and you can throw a million of those up in a day too as you want. You know people are just exactly. tapping until something grabs their attention. But I, I haven't noticed any um, drawback for any consequence from mm-hmm. doing that in my stories because my story reach is always really good no matter how many yeah. ads I post my story. Yeah. The only like the first couple are organic. Yeah. Everything after that can be all ads. Yeah. And my reach doesn't get affected. Yeah. My stories have been way more engaging for me than my actual posts. My posts are kind of a joke. I just post more whatever I want on my personal. The store page though could probably use some help with not yeah. being so salesy. Just because it's posting products every day. People want to know what's in the shop. You figure. But I guess that's why those videos where we're just like making cool content stuff they do really well and probably boost us on the store nice that's good advice mm-hmm. thanks yeah um Absolutely. yeah speaking of the organic like if i was in that um the signature series gym you're standing next to ronnie and like all of a sudden i get a notification and the picture you just took was on instagram like five seconds later i was like dang that was quick as hell that was, that was organic as it gets that ronnie coleman i was there i saw it it was up within five seconds that was dope oh, speaking yeah. of which um how many times have you actually interacted with ronnie coleman so a couple of times, I uh, saw so him on the show a few times, yeah. and I did a collab with him in Bedos Gym at Dubai, where he knighted me with his walking stick. Oh my god, I remember he that. Was strongest bodybuilder, that was awesome. That was cool. That How'd that feel? Yeah, yeah. So cool. I was humbled and honored. Yeah, but to just put you back to like square one, like looking up at like the king, you know, kind of thing, where it's just like so... I can only imagine what that felt like. I mean, it was a surreal moment. I mean, I think for many of us, Ryan Coleman has been an absolute icon, role yeah. model. 
and we can only hope to ever be as successful as he was and Seriously. come close to what he's achieved. So mm. it was very, uh, very humbling to have him do that. You yeah. know? And part of it, of course, was funny, but part of it was like legit. You yeah. know, like he genuinely appreciates what I've achieved as well, yeah. doing what I do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But when it comes to bodybuilding, you know, I'll, I'll never touch what he's done. I can seven, eight times Mr. Olympia. Uh, that's not happening, no. you know. It was my pro card yet. Like yeah. Ronnie is the best yeah. to yeah. ever do it, and yeah. it's always going to be that way. Yeah. You know? Well, I do. I mean, he was a bodybuilder. That was what he did. You know, he, he incorporated his strength. But like, you know, everyone can have their niche where they they excel the highest, and it's cool, man. You I mean you? My mom loves talking about this too. How many different things you guys did? Which, by the way, can I apologize for interrupting you two yesterday? Because oh, I feel like I came and grabbed my mom, and I was like, ah, oh, just somebody let me know that she was talking for a while, and I was like, oh no, I feel bad because she just loves talking. And she's the nicest person in the world, so. She's very sweet. Yeah, I genuinely appreciated that, you guys. I, my mom loved Larry, and she loved talking. He was super cool, so I that means a, that means a lot for me because my mom is obviously a big part of my life and the business and stuff, as you guys know. So, thank you in person for that because uh, taking care of mama bear is important, guys. So, most definitely. Yeah. Most definitely. Yeah. I mean, the first thing I wanted to do when I was successful was retire my mom and just make sure she's happy. Yeah. You know, I know. Uh, the struggle she went through, I'm sure it must like for you, you as well yeah. to bring us up. Yeah. And I mean, the fulfillment that you can have the ability to let her live her best life and just do what she wants to do. Yeah, man. Right. I mean, the means to be able to do that is priceless. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, the, having that vision in my head and that being a real thing brings tears to my eyes. Like just the thought of my mom having like the freedom to do whatever she wants. That's awesome. So have you achieved that yet for your mom? Absolutely. Ah. You know, she's right now, she works from home for my company PR okay. on her own terms, her own hours. Amazing. Yes. She wants to work, she can, she doesn't. I don't check up on her, I'm like, hey, if you want to jump in, please do. Yeah, yeah. It's up to you. Here's the things we're working on. If you got any ideas, and can, that's awesome. You know, yeah, and that's the dream, man. Yeah, she's over there in Bel Air right now. Okay, I was curious. Okay, good, good, good. She's living it up right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. What's well, she drive? Right now, she has got a Ford Bronco. Okay, my mom drives a Ford Bronco. Right? That's Dude, awesome. Badass car. They're not bad. Yeah, they're I would pretty drive cool. a Bronco. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Did you get her the big one? Oh, the uh, smaller one. The smaller one. The smaller one, yeah. Yeah, I got the small one, uh, but it sits up nice and high, mm -hmm. still, just like the bigger one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, I mean, she's alone. Like, she has no other kids. I'm um, only child. She's a separate partner, so. Ten. Right. Yeah. She's chilling with the small one. Oh, yeah, more in common than I thought. Yeah. We That's saw it. Cool, <laughs> now I just need to be able to put over four plates on a bench press and do something with it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really? yeah, you know what? Speaking of which, what is, uh, you know, do you have a... How do I even word this? Do you have a training regimen that you hold dear and close as far as helping increase your strength? So, like, say you have three months, you want to do the 495 for 14 reps, which was incredible to see. Um, what would be your your plan of attack for actually getting to a number like that? Do you have one algorithm? Right. So with that, when it comes to rep challenges, the approach is different. Sure, then a strength then a strength challenge. Absolutely. Let's go with a strength challenge then. Okay, so let's say I'm trying to hit a big single then, <laughs> right? A big PR. Generally it's a twelve week prep. First few weeks are focused on medium volume, which means anywhere from three to five sets yeah. on the compound movement, which is squat bench and deadlift, any variation of it. And anywhere from about three to eight reps. Then the next phase yeah. is the strength building phase. And that's where the volume really ramps up. Okay. Where it will go from five to as much as nine sets per any variation variation of squat bench deadlift. How many reps? And the reps will go down okay. from doubles up to fives. Okay. Then the final phase is the peaking phase. Most fun phase. Okay. And this is the phase that I find the most challenging. How many weeks into the twelve week prep are you doing this? The final phase. The final phase in the peaking phase is roughly three weeks long. Okay. Is that ten weeks or that's what, like six weeks into it, eight weeks into it? Right. So that would be okay, like the first month. Yeah, the first phase I think the longest phase, right? Okay. That's where you're building muscle and building conditioning. Okay. That could be four to six weeks. Okay. The next phase, about four to six weeks as well. Um, and the final phase, about three weeks. So 12 weeks is just like the medium. It could be less, it could be a bit more. Mm -hmm. It depends how much time you want to spend between the muscle building phase and the strength building phase. Okay. Right? But just for easy math, I'm like, okay, let's say 12 weeks. Yeah. Okay. So the peaking phase I find to be the most challenging because if you're an enhanced power lifter, right, 
you've been on gear for weeks, months now. Yeah. You're at your biggest and your strongest. You're with your bros. They're all hyping you up. And they're excited to see you hit a big lift. Yeah. And, I you know, where you're so close to the finish line, you're yeah. so close to finally be able to test yourself. It gets harder than ever. Right? Oh, to not do that? To not prematurely ejaculate. <laughs> and, right. You, Honestly, though, yeah. You gotta, yeah. You gotta hold the load, right? But you're hold you, your load, guys. The excitement is so you have so much excitement built up and adrenaline built up to that point because by this point, right, you've done dozens and dozens and dozens of sets and reps with squat bench and deadlift. You you know you're stronger than ever, right? You know if you've done it right, you know you're stronger than ever. So to have a discipline to say, okay, I could do it right now. And then I think for, okay, back then, right, social media, there wasn't much incentive on, like, a big scale to, for people to say, okay, well, I want to post content to make a career out of it, right? right, right. I'm talking like six, seven years ago. But right. now more than ever, if you make viral fitness videos, you could, that could be your career. Everything is content now. Everything is content. Yeah. Content is yeah. gold. Yeah. So now you have to balance, okay, <laughs> I want to prep for this competition, but... There's actually more value in uh, hitting a big PR on social media and yeah, going viral. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So now you're juggling which takes priority. Yeah. Right. And then this is why the peaking phase has always been the most challenging phase because if you prioritize content, then you will blow that load early. And then you're gonna peak early. Then you're gonna okay, have a great video for socials because you'll be in the gym with probably not calibrated plates. So yeah. it's gonna be a bit lighter than in a competition. Right. And you're gonna be in the perfect environment and circumstances to hit your PR, unlike competition, which can go on for hours. Like I've had days, I've had things where it's 10, 12 hour days, and you're not hitting uh, your last lift from your first lift uh, for as much as eight to 10 hours apart. Seriously? So by the time That's brutal. So you squat at like 8, 9 a.m. and then you deadlift at 6, 7 p.m. Whereas if you're going for a PR in the gym, you go where you want to go. You warm at your own pace. Right, you I have so on. many questions. How do you? That's this. That's a loaded. Also, this all sounds like sex. I just want you to know that do you turn this whole twelve week thing into a one hour night with your favorite girl, and you just gotta stay in control. Of this and you're at your peak phase. What do you think? Right, I hold that nut, bro. You, you have to hold it. And when you, so that's the thing, right? If you're gonna prioritize content, right, which arguably is more valuable than hitting a record at a competition, sure. right? Sure. But then, if you do hit a record competition, that's content too. Yeah. If you record that whole experience, that whole day, yeah. blog it, there's content in that as well. So, it's like you get the best of both worlds if you're able to wait until competition day yeah. to actually peak right, peak on time, which if you do it correctly, is every single time going to be when you feel your best, mm -hmm. right? The only time you get to competition day and you're not your best is because you peak too early. Right. Because you Body tried to hit a PR, sure. Sure. right, mm -hmm. uh, in training before mm -hmm. the competition, right? And I've been guilty of that many times, and I've only made that mistake when my coach wasn't working with me hands-on, likely because I was living remotely. I was living in Dubai, mm -hmm. maybe I was living on the West Coast, maybe I was just living up in the Bronx, it's hard not to get around. amped up. You're around all these guys. You know, you've been doing this for a minute, so you get people around you that want to see you do that. Hell yeah. They and don't want to see you not get hurt. They don't, and probably a lot of people don't care. They probably more care about you just doing cool shit in front of them, too. So you have to, like, take care of yourself, too. Yeah, right. And now I just came off a of bodybuilding prep, mm -hmm. and the final couple of weeks is the hardest, mm -hmm. again, because you're damn near stage ready. Yeah. You're thinking to yourself, now, well, one cheat wouldn't kill my physique right now, would it? Yeah, yeah. Like, I'm already... It's all part of the plan, though. You're supposed to be dead right now, right? Exactly, yeah. yeah. You know, so right before the finish line, I think with everything, that principle can be about is that it's the hardest part, right? And when you're about to cross the finish line, when you're about to wrap up, you know, that's where the mistakes happen. You know, you get too eager, too yeah. excited. And Man, what a great point, because people have a hard time with the first step. It's like... That's that's just the beginning. Wait till you get close, you know, wait till you're almost there. Yeah. You know, I have my biggest question I think is what has content creation and being an influencer done to the quality of competition now that so many people are struggling with that decision? So like how many people are fucking themselves up by the time they go to compete where now you've got to, like are you having like these underground guys be the ones who are winning competitions because the influencers are fucking up? Yes, I would say that's a good question. The ones that 
do the best are just going to be the ones that have hands-on coaching mm, versus yeah. the ones that don't. Because there are some that do great at both, right? They are great influencers and powerlifting, right? Or they're great bodybuilders, mm. right? And they also have constant hands-on coaching where every single training session, they have a coach present. Like with this, this whole bodybuilding prep, my business partner is my training coach as well. Right, right. So every single workout, you know, we're training together. We're talking about my prep, how I'm feeling, how I'm looking, checking my posing, daily checking. So there's no like video checking. You can see me live. Yeah, that's huge. That's, you know? that's, that's huge. And with powerlifting, it was the same thing. When I was preparing for a very big competition, like a world record attempt, the final few weeks, which is the most critical timing because I know myself, if I don't have that discipline, I don't have someone hold me accountable, right? I'm going to prematurely, definitely, you know, I'm going to blow that load <laughs> pre-competition. Yeah. And so I think the ones that have the most success are the ones that have that hands-on coaching, right? At all times, yeah. every, every session. The more hands-on, the more opportunity there is someone to keep you in check, the more accountability that someone has over you, the better, you know? And... The ones that don't are going to be the ones that struggle the most with that. Yeah. Peaking too early. Yeah. Damn, that's crazy. You know, when I did the, I think I told you I did the Olympia Amateur a few years ago. Yeah. I did a whole Nat Geo documentary. Wow, this actually describes everything I went through. So I had, this was the first time I ever had a coach who, actually, I, I uh, worked at a supplement shop. I hired him for the shop. So he was with me like eight hours a day, my coach. Okay. Yeah, he was a freak and he was younger than me. Um, but it worked out well. So having him pose me give me my meals as I needed them versus just giving me a diet and hoping it worked until my next check-in made a huge difference. And then um, getting up to the show, being in front of cameras and stuff, being out there for a week ahead of time before the show, in front of cameras, I started training hard, started using things I didn't need to use because we were showing, um, I did the, the, the prep on injectable arms only. It was like a steroid-free prep to see what people looked like who did that yeah. on stage versus guys who didn't, who were just using whatever. And I'd already used PEDs and I was trying to actually teach people to not abuse because I'd already abused, got fucked up, and I was like, I'm going to prep on SARMs only and just make sure I can still, I still got it. Oh, yeah. And then that last week, you flubbed the peak, and then your moment of shine, and it's like, you're watery, you got nothing there, and then, like, my, you know, your reputation as a bodybuilder and a powerlifter and anything else, it does, it does depend on those moments and what happens in that peaking process and who gets in your head and, yes. and what comes into play those last couple weeks. And I did the hardest three hours of cardio a day, three hours of sleep only for months just to have the last week of excitement ruin everything and billions of people got to see me <laughs> flat on stage but you know like you, you live and you learn and you get a lot out of it and now every other show that i've done i've made extra caution and make sure made, I had, <laughs> made sure that i had those last couple weeks to myself to really be you know in tune with everything because you can't you can't let things go like that you know it's tough no doubt man oh. <laughs> she's catching you're gonna annoy that stuff. <laughs> oh, yeah. right and I'll even touch on this topic with the struggle I have with my addiction. And the way I was able to conquer that was just like with powerlifting and bodybuilding, having a coach hold me accountable, mm -hmm. having my fiance hold me accountable. Mm -hmm. She has the only access to my bank account. So she knows where I'm spending my money and where I'm spending my time. So that gives her full transparency to what I'm doing. And I'm not going to go and spend money on an online strip club, for example, if I know she's going to see the transaction. Right. So yeah, it just doesn't happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the amount of time passes, days, weeks, months, where it's not you even built a habit anymore. and it's gone. Exactly. Yeah, that's good. How long have you been on that path? So that has been since last year. Mm -hmm. And I mean, it's just like the minute I put that into play, I was able to buy a house shortly after. Right. You yeah. know, it's just like I always had the like, funds, the income to do it, mm -hmm. but I was just burning money so quickly because I didn't have help where I needed it most. Mm -hmm. And I respect those that don't need that help, that just have the discipline within them to be able to have that self-control. But I know my weaknesses, mm -hmm. and I also know the robots I can put in place to fix it. Yeah. You know? Dude, I, that's awesome. Acknowledgement, ego control, looking for the next thing that's going to actually work for you. That's like understanding yourself. Everyone has to do that. No doubt. You know, if you don't, your life is going to be to the wind. 100%, you know? And... <sighs> Back on that note, my coach Ryan will have his athletes, top Olympians, for example. He has this weekend over six competitors in the Olympia stage. Wow. He'll have a lot of them stay at his house, just mm -hmm. hold them accountable. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. See them every day, make sure they're not having any junk food, mm -hmm. right? He'll have him watch them like a hawk. 
right? But that produces an Olympia level athlete. For sure. Because for now, sure. and then the athlete knows he's stressed. Yeah. They know they're being watched. They can't just order some Uber Eats, McDonald's, but and then not have the coach see it. Can't can't right? have too much water. Can't have yeah. like oh man, when a coach texts a pro, uh, peaking protocol and they miss text something and they find out oh you weren't actually supposed to have that much water. Blah blah blah. Yes. Hands on. That, there's no room for error. And, That's right. Yeah, no room for error. And this is just a sneak peek of like the lengths that you could go to to get where you want to be, mm-hmm. right? Just having someone hold you accountable for the goals you want to reach. Man, that's huge. That's huge. So what do you think is more important then um, when it comes to bodybuilding? Is it going to be the, or any sort of, man, it could be business, right? Is it the coach? Mm-hmm. Is it the enhancements? Is it the, you know, what is what are your top three priorities when it comes to excelling in whatever you're doing? Having a great coach and someone who's accountable, right? Because that can be applied to literally anything. That's what I'm saying. Anything, it really, really is. Yeah. Right? Finances, uh, sports, sports, uh, anything, anything, a, mm-hmm. everything A to Z. Mm-hmm. If you have someone who holds you accountable, that's watching your every move and knows what your goal is and can make sure you reach that goal. Mm-hmm. As long as you basically do as they say, because you are working with them because they have your best interest at heart. Mm-hmm. And and hopefully they've already done what you're trying to do. That's to right. Extent. Love it. Multitask. Score that burger again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so what did you think of the the dragon burger from Alex's next door? We're gonna order another one right now. Yeah, I think just without the spice, I didn't like it about like a, with it being a little less spicy. And oh, okay. Perfect. Was it the sriracha on the bun, or was it the actual like hot sauce? I think the hot sauce. But the hot sauce would be perfect. You want me to take the hot sauce off? Yeah. Oh, I got you. Hundred yeah. percent. My stomach is sensitive. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> All that I like hot sauce. Yeah. You know, but right now, dude. Right. <clears throat> All right. So I'm gonna order this burger. Tell us if you can still remember everything. You had it down pat when I talked to you yesterday. All the food that you've been eating. Yes, I need. People don't food. understand the volume of food yeah. that you can put down. So oh, I want to know. Yeah. So perfect. This is how I'm excited to talk about. Okay. Yeah. So definitely a food of your heart. Okay. Right. So you came off stage. You, how much did you carb up first? Let's just quick run down. How many carbs did you get by the time you went on stage? Okay. So before I got on stage, it was about 600 grams of carbs okay. from the day before to walking on stage the morning after. Okay. And then from when I got off stage is when I started to have war in my stomach. All the floodgates open. So first meal was five guys. Okay. All right. I got... Uh, Two full size bacon double cheeseburgers and a large fry. Okay. Took that down, went to my hotel room, took a two hour break. At this point, I was feeling like there was something in my stomach, but the thing that your brain says to your stomach when you're supposed to be getting full just wasn't working at all yesterday. <laughs> it just wasn't okay. working it was at all. Disconnected. It was completely disconnected. Yeah, unplugged. Yeah. It was yeah. unplugged. Yeah. Okay, so two hours later, I go to Ruth Chris. Yeah. And I get a 16 ounce ribeye and a sweet potato casserole. And I also had a whole loaf of bread with butter. Whole pound of meat plus. Yes, sir. Excellent. So we tried to uh, add up those calories, we're probably over 3,000. Right? Okay, okay. And then uh, at this point, my stomach was definitely in knots. Yeah. yeah. Uh, still hungry though. Have you pooped yet? Uh, did not poop yet. Yeah, okay. Yeah. That's so a big not, deal. Did not poop. Poops are important. Sure <laughs> the, is. Towards the end of the show, right. you're like an old guy. You're like, took a dump. It's great. Coach, guess what? Oh, um, man. Before <laughs> the show, I didn't poop for about four or five days. Ah, jeez. Really? So I was back. Though. No uh, magnesium, suppository, something like nothing. Nothing, man. Wow. Nothing. Good vacuum either way. So. Yeah, I was like, man, if I had an empty gut right now, my vacuum would be like unbelievable. That's <laughs> how it goes sometimes. Well, yeah. I made it work. Yeah. Okay, so after Ruth Chris. Went up to my room for about an hour, still hungry, still in pain. Like, I want a couple noodles. So I went downstairs to the lobby, a little mini mart, had a couple noodles, because I was still craving some savory. Then I had a Pop Tart. Okay. Then I finally went to bed. I'm like, okay. I like the Pop Tart at the end there. It's just, <laughs> it's so it. easy to smash. Like, 3,000 calories, two Pop Tarts ain't nothing. Legit, bro. <laughs> Especially like the original OG strawberry. What, With I'm the white frosting on top, bro? Nothing's better. You don't even need to microwave it after a show, bro. They didn't have to microwave it. No. They didn't even have an air fryer, too. Could air fry it, actually. It took probably three bites. Legit. It was like a three bite. Did you eat in a sandwich? You did not eat those individually. You ate those stacked in the I had to do the individual. Oh, man. I love stacking me some Pop Tarts. I feel like a real bona fide fat ass when I do that. <laughs> I'm like, no, I'm grown. Watch this. Hey, <laughs> Save Pop Tart. You passed out. Woke okay. up and had some bagels, right? Yeah, so I slept <laughs> for about three hours. 
Woke up, went to Denny's. Yeah. Did you throw up or poop yet? Not at all. Wow. Not yet. I'm puking. That's normally when I would puke by that point. I don't believe. Well, okay. I, I was hoping to make more space, but I was. It's not a bad thing. You know? No. So I was like, well, I guess my stomach's just going to stretch out. Yeah. Yeah. So I went to Denny's and I had the cinnamon roll pancakes with hash brown, bacon, and some water. Dude, the cinnamon roll pancakes also? That deserves a whole podcast on their own. They are fire. Yeah, they're, they're super good. Yeah. They're super good. And then I went back to the hotel, and they were actually getting ready, their breakfast ready, mm-hmm. right? So I walk in the hotel reception, and I'm like, they got cinnamon roll uh, bagels. That's my favorite. So I get a cinnamon roll bagel. Um, I'm like, I'll just have one. So I put some cream cheese on it, like two packets, loads of cream cheese. Down on that real quick. Go up to my room. Hour later, go right back down. And I'm like, all right, I'm going to have two more bagels right mm-hmm. now. Two more cinnamon roll bagels. Some orange juice, more cream cheese, um, and then I believe oh, the orange juice. Yeah, the acidity <laughs> on top. Oh my god! Yeah. It was watered down to be fair. It was oh, super, the most watered down orange juice. Probably ever. refreshing though. It was super refreshing. Yeah, yeah. Especially after nothing but water for like yeah, a week. Yeah, yeah. Are you tasting food by now? I'm definitely tasting okay. food all the way before I could stop. Yeah, yeah, true. Right. Okay. I remember that. And, and then I believe. Okay, so this is when after that. Okay, so then I'm on my way here. About a couple hours later, and when I get here, I got delivered some half pound cookies. Right, I get the natty light cookies, raspberry lemon half pound cookies, which I uh, killed by the way. Oh uh, yeah, all of them. That's good. I, oh, that means we had four yesterday. Yeah, that's a lot. Yeah, that's yeah. a lot of calories. That's like fifteen hundred at least per cookie. Yeah, yeah. Those pop tarts are dense. Those cookies are serious. Bro, I was, I was really, really okay. So you really, have four. Really on the town. So yeah. I have the cookies. Then about you know hour, two hour meet and greet later, mm-hmm. I have a dragon burger. Dragon burger. <laughs> the fries. Heck yeah. Yes, sir. The fries. Yeah. The fries were. Yeah. They were rushed. The yeah. burger had the love though. Burger, love it. I have another one right after this. Yes. Okay. And then after that, uh, what did I do? Okay, we went to. Ronnie Coleman's gym. Uh, you didn't some, eat there. No, yeah, I just had some cookie there. More cookie. About half a cookie. Yeah, and you got raided a little bit. The cookies, the cookie box got raided. Did it know? did get raided a little bit. Yeah, unfortunately. I think but I, I had to cover it back up. Though. <laughs> you did. You did. Yeah. Taking, like, just, just try it. Like, yeah, yeah. Have a cold cookie. Guys, pieces, pieces. Yeah. Come on. I'm like, I don't know why I can get my hands on cookies again. Yeah. Yeah. So we can ship you those too. Natty ships cookies nationwide, so we'll oh. take care of you. Oh. We'll try some different flavors. I'll let I you can't know. wait, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On those, so let's, let's see. <laughs> okay. Hey, man. <laughs> and then, uh, so, okay, after Ryan Coleman's gym, we then went to Buffalo Wild Wings. Did you really? Oh, that's yeah. tough. That's tough for the tummy, bro. Oh, yeah. I don't know this about This is that. where I really cleaned up. Okay, so oh, I had six bone-in uh, bourbon buffalo wings, which were delicious. Okay, six. I had a chicken, uh, chicken sandwich. Okay. Uh, fried chicken sandwich. Then also had three chicken tenders okay. and tours of fries. Okay. All right. That's a balanced meal, I feel like, at this point. Right? Compared yeah. to the rest of the meal? Yeah. I feel like everything's good. The double patty burger, you know, a couple hours. And you're doing pretty good. I feel like it wasn't killing. Did you keep going, though? So I had a chocolate cake after that. There's and the, yeah. then I had uh, no ice cream with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yes. okay. And then now, uh, now we're getting <laughs> numbers. Now the numbers are hitting now. Yeah, okay, we're, okay. we're keeping it up. We're yeah. keeping it up. I Snapchat all of this, by the way. I just make a video about it. I wish like, I had Snapchat that I could watch it all. Bro, I, I, I just, uh, it's ridiculous. So um, after that, uh, we're Buffalo Wild Wings. And then after that, what time was it in the day? What did we have to do after that? You had your five that? o'clock. Um, some sort of. I, don't know, I didn't know what it was, but I know that I kind of knew what you were up to. Uh, oh, a collab. Yes, yeah. I had a collab. Okay. So I did a collab, a little workout with Lucien, okay. uh, China's biggest bodybuilder. Oh, did you really? Yes. Is he in Orlando? He is. Wow. Awesome. Damn, that's cool. And then right after that, right, we're talking about three hours after Wild Wings, um, we now go to pizza. It's about a 14 inch pizza, margarita, and I also have a few garlic knots, marinara sauce. Ah, delicious. And then, right. <laughs> now I'm falling over. <laughs> and then, um, after that, I believe I went back to my hotel room um, for a little bit. And I'm like, yeah, stomach's in knots. Uh, I have to chill for a little bit. Did you do any tummy time? You just lay on your stomach and just... Lay on my side for a little bit. You know? uh, but it passed pretty quickly because I ended up having a couple more Pop-Tarts and cookies. <laughs> 
and then we go out to yeah, the Universal like, Studios. Okay. Right, Trevor pissed on the side and we get kicked out. Right. So it didn't last very long. And we would, um, did you even get in? Uh, we didn't get in. You didn't even get in. That's the best. Didn't even get in. Yep. But we did get to Denny's after that. Okay. So then at Denny's. This is I, Denny's round two now. So Denny's is about 12 midnight. Right, but you had gone to Denny's prior for the cinnamon roll pancakes? Uh, in the morning. In the morning. Okay, so we're doing Denny's again. We're doing Denny's again. Okay. Right, and then, shout out Denny's. Yeah, shout out Denny's. Hey, you want to work Larry Wheels Denny's? We're right here. <laughs> yeah. Oh, your boy. Um, so I ended up having a bourbon bacon burger, my favorite dish from them, uh, towards the fries, the extra bourbon sauce, and an apple crisp to wrap it up. So the apple crisp dessert, which is delicious, whipped cream on top, had that, and then I think at this point, that was it. So I want to say we're close to 20,000 calories. I was going to say we blew 10,000 calories. <laughs> I, I lost track. <laughs> and I gained 30 pounds. So I woke up today at like 260. Guys, that yeah. is ridiculous. It's it's the most I've ever eaten in 24 hours by far. Are you impressed with the fact that you can actually do that? But yeah, I didn't know I was capable. I know anyone was capable of doing that. You basically were starving, and you the brain really feels like you are gonna die if you don't eat that thing in front of you. It, yeah. It's it's interesting what it gets to like in the mind. I mean, you're kind of completely out of it when it gets to that point, and then. To, you think that you're done, and then an hour goes by, and you're like, bro, there's like an inch of space right here. I know I could just yeah. swallow it, mash it up, and it'll fit. Yeah, 100%. And I need that, because I might not get food ever again. That's kind of how the brain like feels. Like It might go back to 25 grams of rice per meal and just be toast, you know? <laughs> Literally, yeah. Yeah, and that, you know, that signals to my brain from my stomach saying, hey, we had enough food, we're good, but it wasn't working at all. Yeah. Not yeah. at all. No matter how much pain my stomach was in, like I'm still hungry. Yeah. And how how long ago did you launch the white rabbit drinks? Were you drinking these on prep, the iced tea ones? Uh, I wasn't able to a week out, but okay. about two weeks out, I started drinking them just to get through cardio because mm -hmm. carbs were super low. Uh, going into the show, I was on zero carbs for mm -hmm. three weeks, um, no fats, and the final few days, no sodium. Yeah. And when I dropped the sodium, it all hell broke loose. Like I just couldn't move. It hurts. It really hurts in the joints and stuff. Did your feet hurt? You know, my joints uh, were a lot louder than usual, like Rice Krispies, Snap, Crackle, Pop. But the hard part was just having that extreme lethargy. Yeah. I couldn't have, I just couldn't move. Mm -hmm. I felt like I was super high, but I wasn't yeah. high. I wasn't enjoying life at all. I yeah. Anyway. Yeah. But I felt like I had like this crazy body high where like every movement is a struggle. I just, like I got to go to the kitchen. I just don't want to move. Like it's energy I can't afford to spend right now. Yeah. Because yeah. your brain saying, we don't have enough nutrients to get you to the kitchen. Yeah. Like you got to be smart. Do you really need to go there? Yeah. For what? Yeah. For have you ever been in that position food. before in any other sport? Never. I never, I never took it to that extreme. Mm -hmm. I never. So I did. I've done two shows in the past. Yeah. Right, and those two shows were for fun. I was cheating on my diet, wasn't committed, and you can see it on stage. It was watery, flat. I mean, I was actually full because I was like, maybe not flat, dude. Yeah, pretty, I was full. Pretty bubbled out. Yeah, yeah. And my legs were a lot bigger. I was yeah. thirty pounds heavier. I was two sixty five on stage uh, a few years ago, and you know, I mean, that was all smiles because I mean, the prep was easy. Yeah. Really yeah, yeah. So this was a true prep, absolute condition, everything dialed in, no cheat meals mm -hmm. for the whole prep, mm -hmm. and I got the real experience. Yeah, that's uh, a big now can really take Yeah, we'll probably right. We'll probably put up a side by side so you guys can see the difference between the two. And you and I had mentioned, and I know you're open to talking about this, the the difference in the protocols that you run before that show, back the shows back in the day versus maybe the show that you just did? Like, what would be the difference in the um, the amount of gear that you would use for something like that? Right, so the amount of gear I would use back then was as much as I could tolerate with side effects. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So there was no, reg and honestly, back then, I was using gear as a crutch, to be honest. I was thinking, well, if I run more of this and that, I can eat more of what I want and maybe slack off with the accessories or training a little bit. Right, I'm becoming very comfortable using gear, too comfortable to where I was yeah, forgetting yeah. what was most important for my results, which was nutrition and training, mm -hmm. and using mm -hmm. gear as a crack. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. So now my approach has changed so much to the fact where I was on tier T levels while it was it was cocktail drugs, climb T3, VAR, Primo, and test. Right. The test at 175, Primo 200 a week, VAR 25 a day, and T3 and Clem. Now those doses. You know, are as low as I've heard anyone ever use. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, right? for sure. And but skin's clear, no insomnia, moves great, libido's great, everything moves uh, is uh, consistent. Yeah, right. Yeah. Um, and 
that's a huge enough. deal too. With as much as you're doing, as much size, like you have so much muscle mass, you don't keep up with food. Yeah. The mood thing, you know, you, you're doing a really good job staying level headed. Also, you regimented, getting going to bed at a decent time, getting up at a really good time. You know, keeps you consistent. Having your girl keep you on lock too. All of those different things coming together. That really. And you know what really opened my eyes uh, last year is. My coach had a different protocol for gear than I ever used before, right? It was a new coach that was prepping for a deadlift, and I did 929 through 3. And that whole press was just 500 tests, the entire press. Mm-hmm. And compared to what I've done in the past, which would be 750 tests, right? right? I was just curious. Friend, mm-hmm. you know, at least half a gram a week. Okay. And then it would be air draw on top of that, right? Um, and maybe even hill testing sort of next to 30 Okay, 750 tests, I mean, you know guys that have run two grams a week. So that's actually, for a, for a high-level power lifter and elite trainer, that's actually not too out of the too out of the norm, but it does come with a lot. It's, so, that would be my cycle several years ago, right? right? right. And then last year, everything changed when I said, you know what? Believe me, trust in the process, just use 500 tests. That's it. So that's it. Because in my head, I'm thinking, why before you hit these PRs, you need to do this, that, and the other. He's like, you didn't need to do that, though. You would hit it with um, just 500 tests. So I ended up getting to 880 for two with just 500 tests. And then the last three days before the big PR attempt, mm-hmm. I just added in trend for three days. I saw, your, I saw a video of you talking about that. Was it ACE, I'm assuming? It was trend ACE. Mm-hmm. Not only. How much per day? It was Sorry. 100 milligrams a day. Okay. No, just no. three days, right? Yeah. This is the only time in the whole prep I use it. Yeah. Right? In the past, I'd go for eight to 12 weeks. Mm-hmm. Right? That's brutal. Ace? Yeah. Can't eight breathe. Eight to 12 weeks. Sorry. I'm out. Yeah. <laughs> I'm crawling weeks, around. You know? Yeah. And miserable. Absolutely miserable. Sure. Experience. For three days, anyone can have three days. Sure. No sure. problem. Yeah. But my physique literally transformed those three days. I remember I just didn't train anything, right? I just rested. Because it was three days before the PR. Yeah, and let them saturate. Like, Let the trend saturate. Hell yeah, yeah. Plus, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I walked in the gym that day, and I looked in the mirror, I'm like, what the hell happened? It's only been three effing days. Yeah. Super bubbly, full trend. Like, I looked like I was on trend for weeks. Yeah, what are you eating, right? too? Uh, oh, we eat normal. Weight still. normal. I'm, I'm eating, I'm eating, I'm eating, I was uh, eating normal. Okay. Yeah, I wasn't okay. bulking, actually, because okay. I was eating while I was hungry, which is okay. quite often. I didn't know if in the last three days you're also carb loading while you're resting or something like that. To I, I, I mean, I was conscious to make sure I got at least five meals in a day. Cool. But I was just eating when I was hungry, so getting those meals in wasn't difficult. Intuitive eating with a basic plan and approach. No doubt, cool. yeah. Cool. And so that's the trend. So we're, we're really we're really noticing that this that the trend is doing things. It's not just a car boat at the same time too. Oh, for sure. That's really cool. But then now the difference is that the week before the PR I did eight eighty for two, and then three to trend I did nine thirty for three, right? So it's the timing of the trend too. So if I did the trend like in the middle of the prep, it wouldn't have the same effect. Right. But because I did it at the very end, right. the most critical point mm-hmm. where my body was peaking, mm-hmm. that's where I saw astronomical gains. And I was able to put on, as I just told you, about how many pounds it is in just a few days. So that made me think about, wow, if I had this information 10 years ago, you know, I could have gotten away with so much more for so much less. Mm-hmm. And now I'm, that's why even going into this bodybuilding show, I'm like, I know I can look just like all the other guys in classic on TRT levels. Sure, I still need to use the same compounds mm-hmm. to get dialed in like T3 clan and mm-hmm. some pretty much fullness. But I need very little of it, yeah. contrary to what I thought I may have needed in the past. And even just 175 tests a week, I mean, there's no side to that. There yeah. is no, well, your, your your blood work is going to be in the red, and you're going to have all these health compromises. You already have other issues if that's the case. Right, right. exactly. Yeah. So now I'm thinking, uh, oh, and also another example is when I was collaborating with Eric in Zoo Culture this past summer. Okay? Um, I was on... 175 milligrams of test and just 25 minutes of R, not even pre nothing else, just 25 minutes of R a day, right? Just once a day. And I did 500 for 10 on the band, which blew my mind because five years ago, my all time best on test trend and anadrol, right, with mega dose, like normal doses for weeks, was 500 for 12. So I'm only, I was only two reps off and I wasn't even training for better. Yeah. I was just like, I was just, I just felt strong. Wasn't in a prep phase, wasn't doing powerlifting at all this year. Yeah. And I couldn't have time time. I'm like, I could actually even beat that now. Yeah. Like just fucking tier T levels with a little bar. Like if I knew this. Yeah. Yeah. 10 years yeah. ago. You know, the damage that could have saved my body. Right. Seriously. But it's like, there's so much bad information out there about PDs, how much they 
a beginner should use and yeah. how much just the average gym bro bodybuilder powerlifter thinks they need yeah. get what they're trying to get yeah. it's ridiculous it's like it's, it's ridiculous it's so cool that you talk about it too and, it, and like you know people talk about Sam Stoic not talking about it I think that's great then there's guys who talk about it and they say too much and they don't give all the information it's cool that you talk about what you did wrong in the past what you're doing now the differences and why you know it's really cool and the trend really is nowadays if you talk to a lot of bodybuilders who really care is less is more turns out there's so much in, the inflammation being built up there's so much stuff that's happening when you take these things for a long time like you should have been on paper blowing numbers out of the water on anadrol for eight weeks but eventually that that spike of benefits you know it just kind of levels out now you're just kind of taking things mitigating uh health you know problems and you're not really getting a lot out of it so that's where the whole two-week cycle blast or two-week this or three-day periods like you get a lot out of that out of the compound you're using without having to deal with the long-term effects of it so no doubt. that's really cool that you you know acknowledge that stuff too so that's awesome i know we're about to wrap this up last thing i want to talk about again is the white rabbits and like what you think about Kratom overall and uh, what your plans are for the drinks and stuff like that. 100%. I mean, right now we're in smoke shops, 7-Elevens, you can buy them online. 7-Eleven? Yes, Dude, sir. congrats. That's yeah. awesome. That's a that's a big thing. Hell yeah. You know, right now, uh, with no discredit being made to our competitors, but it's very challenging to get Kratom to taste not terrible. Dude, it is right? the most <laughs> impressive thing. I, I made a video on this when I first got the drinks. They all taste like energy drinks, which is damn near impossible. And it's a really good kratom extract. I learned about it yesterday. 100%. For example, if you were to take the root beer flavor and compare it with real root beer as you're drinking right now, blindfolded, uh -huh. you wouldn't know which one is the kratom one and which one's not. No, this is A&W and it can't. It's amazing. We all love them. We've been abusing them in the shop, too. So, yeah. right. And, you know, it's microdose. So 9 out of 10 people that take it right, are going to feel... They're not going to feel nauseous. They're not going to feel the typical, if you Google Kratom side effects, yeah. right? This, those articles were made when people were using the pills and powders. Mm -hmm. Those articles are not made with microdose Kratom in mind. No, right? no, this is a nanoparticle Kratom, guys. So it's going to be absorbable more readily by the body. So it's going to be in and out faster, but you're going to get the effects more. So you don't have to take a higher dose. And it's zero calorie. Zero calorie. And that's where the partnership between White Rabbit and I come into play so well. That's why the synergy works well with us because we're trying to get it into the fitness market. Mm -hmm. And the main appeal to it for me as an athlete is, of course, there's no calories, but now as a powerlifter, I'm like, who cares? Yeah, 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 right. But really, but in general, the main effect is not even the energy that it gives because there's no caffeine and unless it's the iced tea version, my flavor, there's no caffeine. Yeah, that's the only one with caffeine. Or like pre-workout yeah. stimulants in it. No. Really, it gives you a sense of so in my experience, mm -hmm. it gives a slight sense of pain relief. Yeah, right? pain big for pain relief. Too. When you're getting to those last couple of reps where you really feel uncomfortable and just don't want to push past it because it hurts, it's uncomfortable. Well, a little kratom in you, <laughs> you don't ever get to that point. Yeah, it's you a little bit like a numbing point. effect in there. It's a bit of a numbing effect, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And there's also a sense of euphoria, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. uh, I like to think of it as having a couple shots of alcohol. I was just about to say, it's a you great know, alcohol like, replacement. It's a great, excellent alcohol alternative. Yeah. You wake up the next morning, and if, so if you have two shots. And right? you'll be drunk. I know where you're going. Go ahead. Yeah, you have two shots. Right. Your cognitive function isn't impaired. Right. Right. So you could have a full can still drive, and you'd be totally fine. For sure. And like yeah, being tipsy sure. and trying to drive where you are impaired. Yeah, yeah. Right. And you wake up the next morning, and some people, even after a couple shots, they might wake up with a little, little bit of a hangover, mm -hmm, a little bit mm -hmm. hydrated, which we still with this should be hydrating well after yeah. you can't have a bottle of water. Mm -hmm. But you wake up the next morning and you won't feel like you were drinking last night. No, no. And and, and uh, Kratom is a natural diuretic, so it does pull off inflammation. My stepmom uses it to like get her rings off because sometimes she just blows out and stuff no too. So, mm -hmm, yeah, and, that's really cool. And, and lastly, my favorite use of it is especially for what's coming up this weekend, or even just right now in the settings, social settings, right? Yes, Podcasts, huge, yeah. meet and greets, mm -hmm. right? Uh, maybe a place where you're gonna be uncomfortable and have to speak, speak to someone or about something that maybe you wouldn't be comfortable unless you had a couple of drinks to yeah. it, right? Or even maybe you're at a bar and you need- And drinks, they're all drinks, drinking right around you. Courage, right, yeah, exactly. Yeah. You wanna to talk to a girl, maybe a bit nervous, whatever, you're in your head about it, so you have a couple of shots, right? To get that liquid courage, well, Kratom, I believe, gives the same effect, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Where it makes social settings so much better, yeah. right? As far as like, there's no anxiety about 
Um, so I'm all about this, killing that social anxiety, yes. being in the moment, allowing yeah. to like, embrace people and stuff and not be in your head. 100%. I love that. It love definitely, that. just like alcohol in mm-hmm. that regard, brings out uh, social butterfly in us. Anyway. That's really cool. Yeah. That's really cool. Well, I know we're about to close it up. I want to give you the gift of chill pills, which are these gummies that I have launched. They use an herb called Kana, so they're very similar to Kratom. So I want you to have these too. It's something you can use back and forth with the Kratom. They go very well with the White Rabbit. So that's for you. Thank you, and sir. And I just want to say thank you for being on the podcast and coming in the shop. We didn't even get to talk about the meet and greet, but we had an epic day yesterday in the shop with the meet and greet. So again, thank you to Larry. Thank you to White Rabbit for making all of this possible too and uh, supporting the shop and, and the dream and everything, man. Well, yeah. Seth, thank you for having me. Great showing yesterday. Yeah. Great pod. Yeah. Guys, day, please man. subscribe for the next one. Yeah. And uh, I will see you again soon, man. Sounds good, bro. Yeah. Thanks for everything, man. No, Continue no, success no. with everything, hopefully. Yeah. Yes, sir. Onward and upwards. All right. Let's get a dragon burger. That's fucking it. Hell yeah. <laughs>